Today, I'll be reviewing the first season of the show Mindhunter and the miniseries Manhunt Unabomber, both of which are currently available on Netflix. The reason for reviewing these shows side by side is that they share striking resemblances to each other with respect to storyline and characters, and I find them compelling for similar reasons. Let's start with the basic facts. Both shows released in 2017, Mindhunter on Netflix as a Netflix original, and Manhunt Unabomber on the Discovery Channel as a Discovery Channel original show. Both are crime drama thrillers about FBI agents investigating serial killers. While Mindhunter centers around FBI agents pioneering criminal profiling of serial killers in the late 1970s, Manhunt focuses on the FBI agent that pioneered the use of forensic linguistics in the mid-1990s in discovering the identity of the Unabomber. For those who don't know or don't remember who the Unabomber is, from 1978 to 1995, Ted Kaczynski killed three people and injured 23 others in a nationwide bombing campaign that targeted individuals involved with modern technology. Both shows are based off books written by the FBI agents they portray. Mindhunter is based off John Douglas's Mindhunter, Inside the FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit, and Manhunt is based off James Fitzgerald's A Journey to the Center of the Mind, Book 3, The First Ten FBI Years. In Mindhunter, John Douglas is who the main character, Holden Ford, is based off of. Douglas has also been the inspiration for the character Jack Crawford, who's the criminal profiler in the Hannibal Lecter series. This is not surprising, because if you enjoyed the first half of Silence of the Lambs, where Clarice is interviewing Lecter, then both shows are for you. Douglas is also mentioned in Manhunt, as he is one of the criminal profilers that worked on the case. In fact, his profile was the first to correctly suggest that the Unabomber was highly educated. This is significant because a long-held assumption by investigators is that the Unabomber was an airline mechanic, as opposed to a former Berkeley math professor, which he was. In terms of reception, both shows have been well-received. On IMDb, Mindhunter has a rating of 8.8 .8 and Manhunt 8.2. On Rotten Tomatoes, Mindhunter has an approval rating of 97% and Manhunt 91%. Metacritic gives Mindhunter a 78 out of 100 and Manhunt a 71 out of 100. Now let's turn to a brief synopsis of each show. Set in 1977, in the early days of criminal psychology and criminal profiling at the FBI, Mindhunter centers on FBI agents and Quantico instructors Holden Ford and Bill Tench, as well as psychology professor Wendy Carr. Together, they comprise the research team in the Behavioral Science Unit that studies imprisoned serial killers to better understand how these folks' minds work. Their goal is to develop a methodology for understanding and catching serial killers. Ford and Tench conduct the interviews with serial killers, where they get the raw data to be later analyzed with Dr. Carr back at Quantico. As a side note, Mindhunter is a pretty dark show. Even in comparison to many shows about serial killers, the unnerving opening scene makes clear the show's tone. Thus, if the opening scene intrigues you, then the show is for you whereas if it repulses you, then maybe not so much. I would not recommend binge-watching it. Being immersed in the minds of serial killers for 10 hours straight can rub off on you. I say this having binge-watched the show myself. Shortly afterward, while in line at the grocery store, I found myself intently watching the people around me, wondering if any of them is a serial killer. Part of this reaction probably results from the fact that one of the serial killers interviewed in the show 
committed murders in the city where I currently reside in, and found his victims at my current place of employment. At any rate, while Mindhunter is about the early development of criminal psychology and criminal profiling, Manhunt takes place 20 years later, when criminal profiling is more widely accepted and regarded as valuable to capturing a serial killer. The show opens with FBI Special Agent James Fitzgerald at his graduation, where he's officially become an FBI criminal profiler. Soon after, he joins the FBI task force investigating the Unabomber murders. There, he pioneers the use of linguistic forensics, conducting linguistic analysis on all the writings of the Unabomber. The Unabomber had mailed letters to the task force over the years of the investigation and had his manifesto published in the newspaper. Fitzgerald's work eventually culminates in the FBI discovering the true identity of the Unabomber and apprehending him. Serial killers are compelling in their own right, as abnormal and deviant folks usually are. With all the shows, movies, and novels about serial killers, it's clear there's massive public interest in the subject. And having consumed a lot of this media myself, I've always wondered how the concept of a serial killer was born, and thus find Mindhunter intriguing because it provides an answer to that intrigue. In Mindhunter telling its audience the backstory of criminal profiling of serial, serial killers, and Manhunt telling the backstory of forensic linguistics and the capture of the Unabomber, I very much enjoy the positive portrayal of the intellectual work that was needed to make criminal profiling and linguistic forensics widely accepted practices in criminal investigations. And in portraying the intellectual work undertaken, I appreciate the representation of the complexities that come about when researching not only an unexplored field, but doing so with unorthodox methods that challenge traditional approaches to the subject matter. Not only is serial killing an unexplored field, but using psychology in the late 1970s challenged the dominant approach to criminals. At the time, the reigning paradigm was that criminals were criminals from birth. They were born that way, and their behavior is completely irrational and insane, and therefore not understandable. While in Manhunt, 20 years after the events of Mindhunter, Psychological profiling itself has become widely accepted, but linguistic analysis as a means of constructing a psychological profile challenges the reigning paradigm of criminal profiling. Both shows represent well the difficulties that beset intelligent, perceptive, innovative, and open-minded people when they challenge widely accepted traditional ways of thinking especially when such traditional thinking is embodied in the people within positions of authority, who have strong reservations about new approaches and believe their decades of experience is proof enough that traditional thinking is effective and legitimate. This positive portrayal of intellectual work in both shows is accompanied by favorable representations of how academics and academic approaches can contribute to relevant, concrete results in the, quote, real world, end quote. In Mindhunter, psychology professor Wendy Carr is invaluable in the development of the FBI's psychological understanding of serial killers. Ford's girlfriend, a sociology master's student, also plays a pivotal role in key insights that Ford has about serial killers. The research methodologies that are standard practice in academia, help in the recognition of patterns and behavior of serial killers and in developing a classification system that can be used in investigations. Similarly in Manhunt, Fitzgerald's sense of linguistic analysis is greatly enhanced by him working with a linguistics PhD student. It is only with the input of a linguist that he was able to develop a credible case, proving to the task force 
that Ted Kaczynski was the Unabomber. Given how Americans tend to devalue the importance of intellectual work and regard academia as irrelevant to practical concerns, it's great that these two shows tell stories of tangible contributions from academics that have made the world a better place. In showing the value of intellectual work, both shows convey how new ideas can be difficult to prove, especially when the evidence for them is not regarded as legitimate evidence. In Mindhunter, psychological analysis was seen as illegitimate, and in Manhunt, linguistic analysis is similarly regarded as illegitimate. In both shows, we see how theorizing in new directions can hit road bumps as we try to put theory into practice and the mutual influence that occurs between theorizing and practice. While theorizing influences what we test out in practice, experience from practice then influences our revisions of the theory, which we then test out again in practice, and on and on. We see this in early episodes of Mindhunter, when Ford and Tench attempt to assist local police departments in the capture of elusive murderers. At this early stage of their research, they are unable to offer useful assistance that would provide a break in the case. But these become valuable learning experiences, where they then revise their theories and methods, and later we see the upside of such revisions when they eventually do successfully help local police departments in bringing killers to justice. Similarly in Manhunt, the early attempts in using linguistic analysis led to dead ends in finding the identity of the Unabomber. It's only after several failures, and Fitzgerald even being pushed off the task force, that he eventually finds the means to succeed in revealing the true identity of the Unabomber. Just as well, both shows capture the pitfalls and dangers that occur when passion turns to obsession when convictions can make it difficult for an innovative person to productively engage with their superiors in an organization whose culture disagrees with them and their work, and how their obsession can alienate them from loved ones, damaging close relationships. This divisive situation, both shows represent well the need for creative people challenging the status quo to be able to effectively communicate their ideas in ways that resonate with those whom they seek to influence. In Mindhunter, we see that Ford's partner Tench is better than Ford at communicating Ford's innovative ideas to FBI leaders and other law enforcement officers. In Manhunt, we see this when Fitzgerald leaves the task force, explores his theories on his own, working with the linguist, and only returns to the task force when he has the tangible evidence that his superiors will recognize as legitimate. Passion and innovation are not enough. Being able to communicate clearly is just as important to success. In sum, I feel that intellectually minded people will get more out of these shows than the average serial killer shows and movies out there. But nonetheless, there is enough suspense to keep both intellectually and non-intellectually minded folks on the edge of their seat up to the chilling season finales.